I should probably go back to therapy. <laughs> We're finally doing it. After nearly two full years of saying that I will read this book, I am finally going to read The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. You might be wondering, Hannah, why did you put this book off for so long? It came out in 2019. It was your most anticipated release of the year. Your favorite book of all time, pretty much, is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, and this is her second book. Like, you were so excited to read it. Why didn't you read it? I don't have an answer for you. I don't know. I just didn't feel like reading it. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're finally here and I'm finally going to read The Starless Sea. I know you've all been begging me for so long and the day has finally come. We're going to spend the whole day reading this book. I'm also probably going to switch between this and the audiobook because I have other things to do today. So we'll go back and forth between the physical and the audio since I have both. But yeah, I'm so excited. Also, side note, I recently got my ears pierced and um, I don't know if you can see them, but do you see that? They're little bees. And I did not mean to match the cover of this book. Was this some weird subconscious thing that like my brain was trying to tell me, give me some subliminal messaging to like finally read this book? Maybe, who knows? That's possible. Hopefully I love it. Hopefully I like the bee motif and um, this was not a bad decision. <laughs> I literally still to this day don't know anything about what this book is about. I have no clue. I have no clue whatsoever. I just know it has something to do with a library. I know bees and swords and keys are like three significant motifs in here. I'm so excited. I really hope that I love it. If I don't love this, I think I'm gonna like be a little bit hard. I'm gonna be really heartbroken actually. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. It's a journey. Let's get started. I swear every time you see me in this video, I'm gonna be eating something new. <laughs> but um, I've made just a little bit of progress. I'm like still on part one, let's see. I'm still in book one about like, I wanna say 45 minutes or so into this audiobook, which is like 18 hours long. It's really long. But I got to a part and they mentioned The Shadow of the Wind. Like one of the characters was reading the book, The Shadow of the Wind. And I was gonna say, this book is kind of giving me Shadow of the Wind vibes. So that's really cool. I love that. Um, that's super exciting. Cause that is one of my all time favorite books. Yeah, anyway, that's the only thing that's really happened so far. The writing is lyrical and beautiful as expected from Erin Morgenstern. So, I'm I'm having a great time with it. I'll come back with some updates um, once more happens and once I have some more thoughts. Back to eating my bagel. Okay, hi. Update, I painted my nails for a little while while I was listening to some more of the audiobook. But quickly, look at my nails. You see the little flower design I did on my nails? It's not perfect, but I think it's cute and I'm happy with it. Anyway, floral nails aside, um, I changed into like comfy clothes and stuff. I'm probably gonna change like 50 times throughout this video, but is it a Hannah vlog if I don't change a million times? No, I've gotten to part two of the book. I'm actually really enjoying the audiobook. I didn't think I would like the narrator very much and I'm not the biggest fan of the narrator, but there is a cast. So some different characters have different voice actors as well. So that makes it a lot nicer to listen to. But after my nails dry, I'm probably just gonna pick up the physical book and read the rest of it um, with the physical book because I, I need to like mark things up and stuff <laughs> because, oh my God, Oh my God, I should have known that if I'm gonna read anything that makes me want to keep reading, it's gonna be a book by Erin Morgenstern. How dare I, but I forgot how much I love her writing. It's just, it's unlike anyone else's. There is something about the way she writes and specifically the stories she writes that make me feel like I've read them before and I exist within this world entirely. Like it is so immersive for me in a way that almost nobody else's writing is. It's so good. <laughs> right now I've gotten to the part where Zachary is at some harbor for the Starless Sea. Um, he's met Dorian, but he went to that party in the city and then he went into the L elevator and now he's at some harbor and he's like yo is this the starless sea and they're like no it's a harbor i don't really know what that means um but we're we're getting like into the real story now and i'm really really excited to see where it goes like i said it's so good i'm loving it it is immersive in a way that i'm always craving when i'm trying to read a book like i want to be removed from this reality and placed into a different reality and her books are the only books right now that like truly do that for me. There are other books that definitely do as well, but like nothing, nothing gets me out of this life and this existence and puts me into a different world like an Aaron Morgenstern book. Nothing does it. Nothing else does it for me. 
why did I put this off for so long? I, here's my thing with Erin Morgenstern books, you know? Like, I understand if people don't like her writing or don't like her stories, because I think you have to like a very specific type of story and a very specific type of writing to really love her books. And obviously they're really popular. Like, she's a very popular author. Her books are very popular, very well known. But when people, like, criticize her writing, like, I understand it. Like, it's just, it's just not your thing. It's not for you. And that makes sense to me. But, like, I feel like it was made for me, okay? Like, her writing is, like, nothing else for me. <laughs> nothing else feels this way. Nothing else makes me feel this way. I'm having a great time. I'm gonna go back to reading and I will check in once I have some more updates and once I've made some more progress. Hello. It is much later. I went back and started rereading parts I've already read because that's how much I'm liking this. I'm literally 150 pages into this book and I'm already going back and rereading parts of it. It's like one of those books where you just like need to put it off because you know that it's gonna be such a favorite that like you just don't want it to end. Like I don't want this to end. I want to live in this forever and I don't even know where it's going. I don't ever want to know where it's going because then that means that it ends at some point and I don't want it to end. It's so good. Oh my god, I literally don't even know how to talk about this. It's a story about stories. Like that's the best way I can describe this book. I'm such trash for stories about stories. Like that's why I love The Shadow of the Wind so much too. I always describe that book as a book for people who love reading, not because like it's just a really good reading experience, obviously that's part of it, but it's a book about books. And that's why I think it's a book for people who love books. And this book specifically, I would describe as a story about stories. And it feels so nostalgic as if I've heard these stories before, like they were stories I grew up listening to, even though they weren't because they didn't exist exist prior to 2019 or whenever Erin Morgenstern conceptualized this book. Nobody here is surprised. Literally nobody here is surprised, especially none of you, because you've been telling me to read this for like two years. I'm not surprised. The Night Circus is like my favorite book. Erin Morgenstern is like my favorite author. Why am I surprised that I like this so much? I don't know. But I think I'm gonna like this more than The Night Circus. Like, I don't wanna say that. I don't wanna say it, cause I don't know, I'm 150 pages in. It's like 500 pages. We've got a long way to go. But like, I'm gonna love this. I'm already obsessed with it and we've barely even made a dent. I... <sighs> All right, hello. It's a new day. I fell asleep last night. Didn't get to read that much more, but I'm about halfway through, a little bit more than halfway through right now. I'm in love in love with this. I haven't felt this way about a book in so long. All I want to do is live in this. And once it ends, I can no longer live in this. And then what will be the point? What am I to do then? I explained this briefly yesterday, I think, but like I was talking about how this book is a story about stories and how much stories mean to us and how they affect us and how they can change our lives and how they can be so important to one person but mean nothing to another and how they're so personal. And I just, this has reignited my love of reading in a way that I was not anticipating. Like I literally, I don't know if you can see it behind me, but I literally, as I was reading this, created an entire stack of books that I was like, I need to read these right now. I've been meaning to read these all for so long. I just impromptu made a TBR for myself, of everything I plan to read right after I finish this book. That is how much it has motivated me to keep reading. And I'm just in love. I just got to the part where we find out about um, Mirabelle, but now I'm very curious to know who Dorian is exactly because I'm very confused about him, but I love the whole Simon and Eleanor thing. I love Zachary as a main character. I literally love every single character. They all have such distinctive personalities and you actually care about them. Um, in the same way that I felt about the Night Circus, like we just have this full cast of characters and I ended up caring about every single character very deeply and that's how I feel about these two. They just feel so familiar to me which is like the only way that I can seem to describe this book is that it just feels like nostalgic. It feels like I've read it before in the best way possible not because it's predictable but because it feels like a fairy tale that was told to me when I was a child. Even though it wasn't it just feels that way and I I'm in love. I'm in love. <laughs> I'm very curious to find out who the Owl King is. I'm really curious to find out how all of these other stories connect to each other. The story of the pirate and the girl and the story about time and fate, but we'll see. We'll see where it goes. But yeah, I...
I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. I have like all these theories and like I already know I'm gonna reread this immediately once I finish it. Like forget my TBR that I just told you I made. I'm literally just gonna reread this book because I need to. I already started rereading parts of it which is why it's also taking me longer to get through it. I have about 200-ish pages left. I'm so so excited to see where it goes and I'll update along the way. This passage, chapter, whatever you want to call it, page 279. A paper star with a single bent corner. Nightmare number 113. I am sitting in a very big chair and I cannot get out of it. My arms are tied to the chair arms, but my hands are gone. There are people without faces standing around me, feeding me pieces of paper that all have things that I am supposed to be written on them, but they never ask me what I am. She didn't have to do that. She did not have to do that. I I did not ask to be called out in this way, in the middle of this fantasy book. Why is that quite literally almost exactly a nightmare I've had? No, people were not feeding me pieces of paper and I think I still had my hands, um, but like I've had variations of that nightmare. I should probably go back to therapy. <laughs> It's beautiful, okay? It's so well written. It's so good. I did not need to be called out like that today. I didn't need that. I didn't need that. Anyway, why why does Aaron Morgenstern do this to me? It's fine. You know, it's not. It's not. But like, I'm still gonna keep reading <laughs> what's new. Also unrelated, but I would just like to point out that today is Friday the 13th and it just feels really appropriate that I'm reading this book on Friday the 13th. Feels like the stars really did align. The stars really did align for me today. They were like, fate and time, y'all can be together today. We're not breaking you up. The moon intervened and y'all will be together so that Hannah can read this book on Friday the 13th and fully immerse herself into this world. I'm about to get on a ship and sail off to the Starless Sea. I still don't even know where it is. Zachary also doesn't know where it is, but I'm about to go out and try and find it. Didn't need that call out though. Did not need that call out. It is once again another day. Today, we are finishing The Starless Sea. Also, if you're wondering why, sometimes I have the cover on, sometimes I don't. I have like three copies of this book, uh, even though I still hadn't read it. But today, we're finishing the book. I am currently on page 400. 19 so i have 70 ish 80 ish pages left something like that can i do math like 70 pages left so very very close to the end now i i know i've said this a million times i literally am obsessed i love it so much dorian and zachary so good the way all of the stories have like come together finding out who fate and time really are finding out who the pirate and the girl really are i just i don't know how to explain this book and like i don't even want to spoil it in this video like i was gonna actually talk about spoilers in this video but i don't think that i will maybe a little bit at the end when i finish it but like i want you to read this and i want you to know nothing about it and i want you to let it unfold and i want you to experience everything without knowing anything that's going on in here like let it not make sense and let it start to make sense as it goes on that's like the point of the book anyway that's kind of what zachary is going through like he has no idea what's going on he is quite literally thrown into this world of the starless sea and trying to figure out what it is and where it is and he has so many questions that are just mostly left unanswered and you're discovering everything along with him and you're just as confused as he is the entire time but in the best way possible i know a lot of people talk Talk about like books being confusing and they don't like that in some fantasy books because it just makes it kind of like hard to follow and like I fully understand that but I think this book like leans into that intentionally like Zachary is also really confused because he literally falls down a rabbit hole and he's like what am I doing here what's going on who are any of you and all of them just keep replying to him with more questions like not who how or not where but why and like stuff like that and like I don't know I don't know how to explain it like you just need to read it <laughs> Anyway, every single time I have like a clip to include in here, it's literally just me saying like the same thing in different ways because I, I genuinely don't know how else to talk about this book. I don't know how to explain like how this book is affecting me because it feels very subtle. Like I don't feel outwardly super, super excited. Like I just feel like screaming about it nonstop. Like it feels very 
personal for some reason. Like I want it to be my own. The way that Zachary feels about um, Sweet Sorrows in this, like he doesn't want to talk to anybody about it. He kind of just wants to keep it to himself. Like that's how I feel about this book. Like maybe I'm having a little gaslight gatekeep girl boss moment, but like I, I want to keep it to myself, you know? <laughs> I mean, not really. I want like literally everybody to read it. And like so many people have read this before me. I'm like the last person to read this book, literally, even though I feel like I should have been one of the first people to read this book, but that's on me. <laughs> but my point is that like, I love this in such a personal way. And I don't know how to describe that. Like, I feel like it's supposed to be kept private. And I don't know, I don't think I've ever had like a reading experience like this one before. I'm so close to saying that this is like my favorite book I've ever read because it's definitely one of my favorite reading experiences I've ever had. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see when I get to the end, but this might just become my new all-time favorite book. If anyone could have done it, it would have been Aaron Morgenstern, you know? But like, oh my god. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to say anything yet. We'll wait until I get to the very end because endings of books really like make it for me. Anyway, let's get back to reading. I will update as I finish. Fuck. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I need to I need to calm down. <laughs> I swear to god, this book is like Aaron Morgenstern took my favorite quote from the Night Circus, the one that I put on this bookmark but that I made circa 2016 or 15. And there are never really endings, happy or otherwise. Literally my favorite quote from that entire book. It's like she took and there are never really endings, happy or otherwise and wrote an entire book about that. <sighs> I, I can't do this. I'm not okay. <laughs> and no story ever truly ends as long as it is told. Shut up, this book is literally why I love reading. I've ever read. <laughs> I I need I need I need time. Hold on. I got time. <laughs> okay. I did not expect this to make me cry. Um, but it did in fact make me cry. <laughs> I literally can't do anything but like clutch this to my chest. I don't know how to explain the way that this book makes me feel how much it weirdly meant to me i've never read something that like felt so much like it belonged to me the entire time i was reading it i sound so gatekeepy and that's not what i mean like i said before like i think everyone should read this because it's so good as i was reading this like it felt like the story was mine like it was for me to read and me alone and i don't know if other people felt that way while they were reading it like i don't know if that was erin morgenstern's intent but like she made this feel like such a personal story that belongs to the person reading it and as she describes in this book multiple times like each person who reads a story is going to get something completely different out of it it's going to mean something very different to each person who reads it they have a very different interpretation based on who they are where they are in life so i think that there was probably some intent there and it definitely worked for me it felt like while i was reading this all that existed was what was inside of these pages i wanted to live in this story and i did I did live in this story. I lived in Sweet Sorrows. I lived in the Ballad of Simon and Eleanor. Like I lived in these stories. They feel like they are a part of me. What did she do? What magic did she write? I don't have the words. I don't have the words to describe it. I feel so inarticulate right now because I quite literally like am. I just, I don't, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. <laughs> I can't believe it took me so long to read this, but if we take any lesson from this, we can also take that there is a specific time when you are meant to find things. And I think I was meant to read this book now, not back in 2019 when it first came out. And 
I first got it. I think I was meant to wait to read it now when I needed it the most, when it would impact me the most. I don't think I've ever read anything that made me actually believe in like magic more. <laughs> I'm not a religious person. I'm not very like spiritual or anything at all. But you know, there's always that like child that lives in you that wants to believe that magic exists. And this book honestly kind of made me believe that magic could exist, that these fairy tales could exist, that the starless sea is real and maybe one day I can sail it. And oh my God, I just, help <laughs> read it please read it oh my god i think i can definitively say this is my favorite book of all time i don't think i've read anything i like more than this i don't think i've read anything that feels more like i want to read it again and again like i want to just be like trapped inside of these pages forever and never leave like it was genuinely so hard for me to finish because i just knew that it was going to end and i didn't want it to end and it was so hard to get through the end of it i would just close it like every five pages and be like no like we can't because it's going to end and I don't want it to end and I want to live in here forever but oh my god <laughs> but I think I can say that I think I can actually say that I like this more than the night circus I like actually like it more than the night circus which I didn't think I could say like I still love that book with my whole heart I love it so much but there is something about this story that I don't even think I fully processed yet since I just finished it like I'm gonna need a few days to like sit with it and think about it some more and like let it stew and read it again and again and again there is just something so purely magical about this purely magical I listened to the audiobook for a good portion of the beginning of it um but then I just read the physical book I would say I definitely prefer reading the physical book to the audiobook the audiobook's not bad by any means there's just something about Aaron Morgenstern books where I think like an audiobook just can't do it justice like I need to physically read the words on the page because I need to like imagine the way the characters speak and stuff for myself I don't know there's something about her writing that like I need to do that with it so the audiobooks never like hit right for me but it was definitely not bad by any means I don't like the Night Circus audiobook at all like I would just never recommend it personally but I do like the Starless Sea one so if you do want to listen to it it's definitely worth listening to so while I physically read the rest of it I did tab some of the pages as you might be able to see they're like really light so you can't tell for like some of my favorite sections there's the whole section where Zachary is talking to death essentially and there's like that whole back and forth that they're having and it it took me out I was like you don't need to call me out like this like I don't need to hear all of this or death is telling him that like you exist in these fantasy worlds and put yourself into these fairy tales because you're trying to avoid like real life and you're trying to avoid um everything you're afraid of and you feel like you're not good enough and you aren't good enough and like all of this stuff i was like okay death can you just not be my internal monologue for a minute? I'm not, I'm, I'm not having a good time. <laughs> I think this book is so hard for me to describe because it doesn't really have a thesis, I would say. I feel like the overall moral of the story is that it is a story and a story can mean whatever it means to whomever is reading it. And I think that's the moral of the story, if that makes sense. So it's so open-ended in a way that is deeply, deeply satisfying, in my opinion at least, and leaves you wanting more, obviously. Like, I want a second story about Kat and the other door. Like, I need it. I need it so bad. But at the same time, I'm so happy with just this. The transportative powers of this book are unmatched. Unmatched. I don't know how else to describe it. This is why I love to read. This book is the epitome of why I love to read. I don't think it's for everyone is the thing. Like, I don't think everyone will like this. I think you have to like a specific type of book, which is fine if you don't like it, but I think you should give it a chance. I think you should go in open-minded. I think you should go in knowing absolutely nothing about it. Thanks to Erin Morgenstern, for once again writing another masterpiece. I have my bee cover again and I'm genuinely so happy that I decided on these bee earrings on pure chance, pure coincidence. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was Mirabelle. Maybe it was her intervening telling me, giving me some kind of sign to choose the bees. Actually, you know what? When I got my ears pierced, the girl who worked there, I think she had pink hair. That's terrifying, if I remember right. I feel like one of them had pink hair. Fate. I'm telling you it's fate. <laughs> it makes me think about writing and storytelling in a way that I haven't thought about them before, but also in a way that feels so familiar and feels so right to me. And it makes me want to write. It makes me want to read more. It's so beautifully written, completely immersive, evocative. You can see and smell and feel everything she describes, just like in The Night Circus. And it's 
brilliant like honestly just brilliant masterful storytelling the layers and depth to this the puzzle pieces that you have to put together while you're reading it it's mysterious and enchanting and haunting and heartbreaking and realistic and completely fantastical all at the same time and that is why I love it so much and that is what I love about books and this book is all of it all of it wrapped up into one and it's perfect it's perfect oh my god anyway I'm just repeating myself again and again but please read The Starless Sea if you have any book recommendations that are even somewhat similar to this one please leave them in the comments below. Um, I need to read more things that you think I would like based on this, based on all the other books you know I deeply love. But yes, that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed watching. I hope it was fun for you. I hope it was worth the wait, the two year wait of me putting this book off. Um, but it was worth it for me had a great time. I hope you had a great time as well. Also a quick reminder, my reading journal, the A Clockwork Reader reading journal, if you did not watch my last video, I am releasing a reading journal. I'm super super excited about it. It comes out December 7th. It is available for pre-order so the links are in the description box if you would like to pre-order my reading journal. Don't forget to check that out in the description box as well. But yes, if you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of the links are in the description box as well. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!